Hey, you're watching GearWire.com. I'm Owen O'Malley. We're at the uh, Empty Bottle in Chicago with Erica and Leif from EMA. How's it going, guys? Not bad. So I wanted to talk about uh, so the creation of your solo album. Uh, this is your first full-length solo album? It is my first full-length released solo album on vinyl and CD. Ah, right on. No cassette? Uh, not for this one. There was... We can go into that later, but yeah, yeah. Okay, so I, I wanted to first, so you recorded and, and produced this album yourself, correct? Yes, with, with help from this man, Leif Shackelford, who runs a uh, studio in West Oakland. Yeah. It's, just, it's just a small room, Pro Tools HD2, but blessed with a really nice live room and, and a uh, grand piano and all that. Cool. Um, and, and good people working there, like Erica. So, uh, so where did you start the production of the album? I mean, some of the songs in there are very old. Um, a song like Marked, Marked and Butterfly Knife is were recorded like in an apartment in LA, like in 2005 when I just, you know, recorded on an M box when, with like, I first discovered Waves plugins or something. And those are the tracks that ended up on the album that was released? Yeah, those, yeah, those, those takes are the ones that ended up there. I've tried to redo them and it just did not, yeah. Um, okay, well, let's talk about the uh, the first track on the album, which is called yeah. the, the Gray Ship. Yes. Uh, you kind of play with fidelity a little bit. Do yes. uh, you want to talk about that a little bit? Um, well, I, for a long time I have been wanting to uh, make a song that actually switched fidelity in the middle, um, just because I feel like it kind of bring people's attentions to uh, how different fidelities are interpreted, kind of like lo-fi. Uh, what that signifies to people, if it uh, if things recorded on a four track, does it you know mean authenticity, does it mean old, does it mean like hippies, you know, or something. And then I wanted it to, to change into a, to morph in the middle of the song to a higher fidelity, just to get people thinking about um, their perceptions of, of music dependent on how they are recorded and what techniques are used. So for sort of like the, the low fidelity intro to the song, you actually recorded it on the cassette recorder, is that right? Yeah, Tascam 414 or whatever. And wh where'd you, did you bring it into, uh, where'd you bring it afterwards? How'd the rest of the song get fleshed out? Actually, we tracked the rest of the song in Reaper and then brought it into Pro Tools for mixing. Yeah. So where did you start, like, uh, do you, do you record at home? Like, what is your home studio set up like right now? I mean, for, I don't have, for years, I've been using, you know, my same Mbox. Well, as you say, yeah, we're on the road right now and, and actually are using it again, just like a, the, the old blue first gen Mbox on, on some new stuff right now. So. Yeah, but he, I mean, he has amazing stuff at his studio. A lot of stuff is hand built, built he built the preamps that are there. Built yeah, microphones. You, you can you can really hear some like if you listen to the song Breakfast, that was the only one that was tracked through sort of completed studio that had sort of like DIY tube mics and preamps and, and optical compressors and things and that so you can you can hear a variety of sound because that one sounds very like clean and smooth, but that was also Erica's intention for that song as being sort of one of the you know, one of the cleaner ones on the sort of the whole record has like a, a wide variety of fidelities from I would say probably the the most like distorted kind of lo-fi one is actually Butterfly Knife. The intro is yeah. just like... That was one that when I, this is like me first learning how to use Pro Tools and I'm just sitting there like, you know, clipping the input and the, you know, instead yeah. of being like, well, you know, you can get that if you just put like a gain, but no, I'm going to yell into it and, you know, not yeah. knowing how to <clears throat> use a compressor, like, you know, putting the like... Well, it's because the mastering high. limiters on a vocal track. Putting tons of, yeah, um, like, the L, let's throw the L2 on everything. Right. It's great, you know, let's... Uh, but then we tried to, I, I took the stems and I split it out and I tried to, like, okay, I'm going to go and, like, recreate this in a smarter way, and it totally failed. It totally failed. It just, like, it wasn't, we could well, never get the same yeah, sound Yeah, I mean, back. I feel like there was a lot of, like, intu even though I was learning, there was a lot of, like, intuitive things that I did that were completely wrong. But, you know, I was willing to just kind of do it, and it gets a sound that I can't even re-recreate. You know, if I wanted to make that sound now, I, like, know too much to even go back and, and you know, and do it. <laughs> Only you knew now what you knew then? 
Yeah. If only I didn't know now what I didn't know then, maybe. I think that's what I meant. Yeah, I, I, don't, yeah. I don't know. I want to talk a little bit more about what, what fidelity means in the context of a song, okay. do you think? Is that supposed to be a quick question? Yeah. <laughs> Three words. No! Um, the one thing that I think is, is amazing about, about music is that um, it's, the production and the technology has changed throughout the years that it's got a, a, a language that people can understand intuitively whether they realize it or not. Like if you hear a song, anybody, even if they don't study music, can tell you, oh, that song sounds like the 80s, or oh, that song sounds like the 70s, or that song sounds like metal, that song sounds like this. And I'm just really excited to be able to use that kind of uh, just intuitive knowledge that we've all grown up with and play with it as far as is in records go. Just take it, plug it in there, plug it in that, and yeah, it's exciting. Do you, I mean, how, like, do you do a lot of, uh, do you subscribe to like, n like nerdy gear magazines and stuff to, like, do you research into like what kind of gear was used in those, those I, areas? No, I just, I've listened to pop radio since I was like three. And so I can just hear it, and then I'll go in the studio, and I'm very particular, and I will spend a long time getting the sound that I want. But, you know, I'm like, this, this has to sound like this. This has to signify this, you know. Um, but I don't, I'd play. And that's one important thing is, like, I think you can read as much as you want, but you should just get in there and just start playing. Awesome. Thanks very much. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Have fun at Pitchfork. Oh, yeah? I was just going to yes? add one thing about, about uh, you know, nerdy stuff. I, rem I just remember one, one time during the record there was something that was happening and we needed to do a crossfade. And I started with a linear crossfade and Erica said, no, that has to be an exponential crossfade. And she I went and changed know. it to an exponential crossfade and was like, okay, that's it. Don't so. fuck with my crossfades, man. <laughs>